Segment three, Gold and Black Live. And it's not a requirement of a sponsor to be on our show, but I'm going to move this way. You can see State Farm agent Trent Johnson. Trent is my agent.com. But Trent brings so much. He, he's, a, he's a crackerjack State Farm agent. We can attest to that. I can on a personal level. But, and and his entire operations. There. But he also, as we all try to say every week, this is a guy that gives a lot, not only to the community, but also to the sporting community. Uh, from uh, being a ref official tonight, you've got a game tonight, but uh, there's all you know, you and Max Bales are always a tooting the horn about the fact that there aren't you know, we need more officials for sporting events. We'll talk about that too, but also Trent will be on the sidelines for tomorrow's Purdue Illinois game, 3 30 p.m. We probably have the sunscreen on, I'm thinking, but uh. Trent, welcome to the show. But it's 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 football season, so there's never a dull moment and never a never a moment to sit still. It doesn't seem. No, it's hard to believe uh, this week for high school is uh, counting tonight. We only got three regular season games left, and then the the tournament starts. So the high school season is certainly flying by, as is the uh, Purdue season. You know, we've had a string of home games here in a row, so. That stretch comes to an end tomorrow. So, uh, but but the season is definitely flying along. It's my 39th high school football season, and uh, you hit the nail on the head. We need more officials, men or women, uh, either one. We're we're in a tough spot. Five, have you gotten to 500 games? Then have you? What's your count? 39 I, years. You know, I was trying to figure that out the other day. Um, you know, probably I at least at least 400. Level. Right. Certainly 400. Um, I still work some lower level stuff, seventh and eighth grade games, junior yeah. high, JV, just oh, because there's fun. not enough of us. Right. And, so I'm and, certainly. And... Yeah, I was going to say you're at you're at 500. Then if I forgot about JV. So when you look at that and, and, and really the lack of uh, and this in all sports, too, as I understand it, I mean, it's uh, you know, we, we, we have such a craving for youth sports and activity in this country. And yet, uh, we need we need folks to to do it. How long does it take to get certified? I mean, what's that process like? If you if you if you're someone that might be interested in doing it, I mean, how does that how does that work? Alan, that's a great question. So here locally, we have what's called the Western Indiana Officials Association. Uh, we have one for every sport. I'm happen to be the football chairman uh, for the Western Indiana Officials Association. Uh, the A. HSA has agreed to give any new official a free license for the first year yeah. uh, in up to three sports. So football, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball, whatever three you choose. And if you're a football official, I pledge to help you take, pass the test, help you get equipment ordered. Um, it's not really difficult to become an official. Yeah. Um it's an, op it's an open book test. Don't tell anybody. This is kind of a secret. It's an open <laughs> yeah. book test. And you got to get 50 or there's 50 questions. And um, they're all true, false. And even if you didn't open a rule book, you could probably pass it if you knew a little bit about football. So but then we have folks to mentor you along the way, uh, help you get games, work with you on the, you know, uh, during lower level stuff to get you up to speed. Uh, so certainly if anybody's interested, reach out, I'd be happy to help football or direct them. If it's another sport who in our Western association, that would be. Uh, Trent is my agent.com. And even if those of you around the country that are watching, just figure out a way if you can to, to serve in that, that environment. Uh, it is a, it is important because uh, we, we have such a high, high uh, amount of uh, desire to watch these games and have our kids participate, uh, but they need to have good officials. All right. Well, look, Alan, you're, you're, there, yeah, there, there, there's such a shortage that we're seeing varsity football games in Indiana being played on Thursday night or Saturday night because there's a, not enough uh, crews now to cover every Friday night game. So uh, baseball is in a similar situation. JV baseball games are being played with only one umpire instead of two. So we're, we're in a critical spot. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, so the word is out on that front. Okay. You're also, your Saturday job is on the sidelines and you've been doing that for a long time. Of course, you also do a lot of basketball, but talk about, talk about that in terms of some of the rule changes. I mean, obviously the biggest ones we've 
at least from my perspective, have been the running clock and now after first downs. But some of the things that are good that are that maybe people may not know from this year in college football, but also just that general move towards more and more safety seems to be as much of a thrust as anything else. Is that a fair assessment from your view? That is that's a very fair assessment. This is my 20th year on the Chang Gang at Purdue. And uh, obviously, like you mentioned, the biggest change this year is uh, there's no stoppage of a clock after a first down uh, unless we're in the last two minutes of either half. And that's to speed up the game a little bit. Um, I don't know. I haven't looked at any statistics to see if that's had a real effect. Uh, but one of the things they talked about doing that did not pass this year is going to the NFL rule where any incomplete pass once the ball is set and ready for play, they would then wind the clock then as well. The, the NCAA did not adopt that rule, but that's something they continue to look at. And as you mentioned, uh, this year and for the past several years, and I'm sure for the next several going forward, all safety fouls uh, are being evaluated. You know, the blindside block, the guy getting blown up 20 yards behind the play, uh, you know, 10 years ago, that was illegal and great play and coaches would go crazy and applaud yeah. and clap. And, uh, you know, that that's been completely removed from the game. So those types of hits, you know, the launch, the target um, in the NCAA is a different rule than our high school rule uh, in the NCAA. That's an automatic ejection um, and, and high school. That's not an automatic ejection. Uh, unless we think um, it was done with intent to take a kid out of the game, right? Not just to make a play, but to punish them and, and take them out for the rest of the game. Uh, then we could remove them, but that's pretty rare in high school that we have an ejection uh, for a target. Well, you know, and, and I think it was the Syracuse game. It was just interesting because you had a different, you know, you had ACC crew, and that happens. Uh, you, you're going to get different crews, though. I, I've always kind of wondered why they do that, but I guess maybe they want to try to make them. And you know, you're the home team, so you got to deal with the road, the, the 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 other league's refs. But one of the things in that game, which was interesting, was just the it was uh, there were other things that were interesting, but the uh, the whole notion of uh, uh, roughing the passer, and that was another foul that seemed to be more. They were calling them more, uh, it seemed, and I may, I don't really have data to support it, but there were more roughing the pass or gate pat penalties in that game. There were a couple in the Wisconsin Purdue game that I thought, well, hey, last week, back Tim Newton on a radio crew commented that last week, that would have been roughing the passer just because against Syracuse, it was that way. Talk about the differences in officials and, and crews, but also maybe rules interpretations. It really should be pretty streamlined, I would think, in college football. Right. I, th I think the college football uh, officials are taking their lead from the NFL. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, quarterbacks in the NFL are obviously the face of the franchise and they don't want them being touched in any way without getting a uh, roughing penalty. Uh, but I think it's bleeding down now, even to the college, as we saw in the Syracuse game, you know, the incidental hit to the helmets yeah. now being called, um, uh, roughing the pass or a guy rolls into the guy's legs after being blocked is a roughing the passer. Um, we don't have that yet in the high school game. Uh, you know, roughing is roughing or, or late, if you will. You know, we give that kid still a step in, in the high school game uh, as the referee or the white hat. I'm back by the quarterback. So when the ball's away, I'm yelling to the defense or whoever can hear me balls away, balls away. So we don't get that late hit on our high school quarterback. Uh, but that is certainly a different rule in the NFL and college than what we have in high school. Um, your comment about uh, officials from, from different conferences is, is spot on. I will tell you the Big Ten group are the best in the country at what they do. Um, I've been fortunate to be on the chain gang for 10 years. I've gotten to know a lot of those folks. Um, a lot of them will speak as guest speakers through Zoom to our Western Indiana officials group. They're yeah. always eager to help our younger officials. But I will tell you, they work hard at their craft. They're good at their craft. And that's why several Big Ten guys you now see in the NFL 
or or yeah. gals, Robin De Lorenzo uh, was probably one of the best wings I've seen work. Uh, she's a line of scrimmage lady, and she got called up to the Big Ten, and I talked to her. But I'm not surprised she was she was very good. You know, you can tell uh, a good crew uh, with the communication they have with the chain gang on a Saturday. Yeah, I think the, the normal fan would be shocked at the uh, uh, amount of conversation that that takes place uh, between uh, the chain gang and the officials on Saturday. We're in constant communication with those officials, especially the sh what we call the short wings. So the guys on the line of scrimmage are the short wings. Um, the communication with them during a game is constant, right? So Scott Leverens, who holds the down box, first down, second down, third down, He's always telling that guy, um, okay, we're first and 10 at the 25. We're going to the 35. Okay, we're second and five at the 30. We're still going to the 35. You know, um, if, you know, we're second and four or four and a half, we have a piece of tape on the chains. So we know if, if the ball's ahead of that piece of tape that a five yard penalty will get us a first down. So he's telling that wing, five yards will get us a first down or five will get us one or we're, we're behind the tape or, you know, and then the guys holding the chain at either end, whether that be Mike DeBoy or, or Naughty Weaver, uh, they're in communication again with that short wing. When a tackle's made, they're yelling, you know, for past the stakes, they're yelling at that official first down. We're close. We're short. Uh, the last thing that official wants to be doing is looking back to see where yeah. we're at, if he's past the line to gain or not. So they want us telling them first down, short, close, take a look. So uh, the amount of communication on a Saturday, I think most fans would be surprised at. Yeah, I, 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 I am just hearing you talk. And, and even like I said, when you get to measurements, that – the impetus for that comes from the chain gang, really, of talk, communicating with the officials. It's not like they have to look over and, and say, hey, wait, it looks like we're close. You're telling them, hey, this this looks to be close. Obviously, it's their final decision, but that, that's a, that's the process. Correct. And you'll notice the last few years, we've not had as many uh, measurements. If you notice, when we start a possession, we always start on what we officials call a, a big line or, or a line. We're not starting at the 31 and a half. We'll put it at the 31 or the 32. So that official knows then we got to get to the front of the 42. Yeah. And if we're there, it's a first down. We don't need to measure, you know. So um, in rare cases, will they spot that on a half yard line? So if you have a fourth and goal situation and that ball is stopped at the half yard line, then they are going to spot it at that half. But otherwise, for the most part, if we're outside the twenties, you're going to see that ball always spotted on a line, uh, right or wrong. Uh, that, that mechanic has trickled down to high school as well. We're always going to spot it on a line. Uh, so to keep those measurements and to a minimum, keep the game moving, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's an efficiency thing, but, uh, yeah, you know, and I'm sure that that, uh, uh does speed it up all right you get to see a lot of personalities and uh i would not ask you to speak out of school too much but you've been on the sideline with ryan walters you've been on sideline with a lot of coaches over the years in college football first just your impression of how how ryan handles himself uh you you spent i believe half this game on the Purdue side and then half on the other side but tell us about that uh and and what you're seeing from his staff they they are all coaching. Uh, yeah. Very little uh, that I've seen or heard, you know, of chewing out a player, really getting on a player, uh, at least on the sideline publicly. That probably happens in the locker room. But I I really have come to like this staff. Um, gotten to know a couple of coaches personally, and I think Purdue football is in great hands. Uh, uh, with the coaching staff we've got and the quality and character of coaches they have. I, I think they're doing it the right way. Yeah. That's good to hear because you can tell a lot about how coaches are. I mean, uh, in how they handle, uh, handle officials on the other side, what are some of the coaches that have left you with the, you know, you've been there with urban Meyer, you've been there with the uh, many others, the big names throughout the course of your career at Purdue, other ones that, uh, 
maybe have gotten your attention one way or the other? You know, when, when Joe Paterno was on the sideline, uh, I was, he did probably didn't say five words during a ball game. Uh, he just paced and let his assistants coach. I think the only words I ever heard him speak were, uh, give me a timeout, I think, was was probably all Joe ever said. He just paced up and down the sideline and let his coaches coach. I will tell you, uh, the guy we're going to miss the most is is the Northwestern coach. Yeah, uh, Pat Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yeah, uh, without fail, every year he would come to Purdue. He would come with us guys on the chain gang and thank us for being there. Mm -hmm. uh, shake our hands and say, you know what? I know you have better things you could be doing today. Thank you for being here. I appreciate what you do. Uh, that that guy was first class. Yeah, and it's it's interesting on that front because obviously all the difficulty he's been through. There's always more right. to the story, but guys, it is very very telling uh, in terms of that. To, uh, guys that to, guys that take the time to appreciate the fact that. To, you know, you're not high paid personnel, on the, even in the, in the not in high school football, but certainly not in uh, in your in college football, too, as well. So. All right. So what's your game tonight? And talk about, uh, you, you know, your crew has been together for a long time. And it's a, it's really is a I, I think you I sense because you and I've talked over the years. It's it's a fun event, uh, but it's a time time consuming event. And it takes time away from people's families and people have to make choices. But talk about your crew and where you, right. where you are tonight right. and how that's been fun. So we're at Northwestern tonight versus Western. I, I got a great crew that's been with me. Uh, a good number of years. Dave Mecklenburg, of course, is my umpire. We've been together forever. Uh, Mike Deboy is is my wing. Uh, this year, we've per picked up uh, Kurt Clemmy is new to our crew this year. Our regular line judge, Tony Gregg, has got some health issues this year, so he's sitting out this season. And then my son, Cody, uh, yeah. joined us three or four years ago and is our back judge. So, um, you know, I'd like to work one state final with my son. Uh, yeah. I've been blessed to work three state finals. Uh, we have a shot this year. If our numbers are good and uh, uh, everything works out, we have a shot, we think, this year to maybe get that fourth state final for us and my first with my son. So, um, uh, you know, so tonight, uh, game starts at 7 at, at, at uh, Northwestern, which is over by Kokomo. I'll probably leave the office at 345 or 4. Uh, we got to be in the locker room for a 7 o'clock kick by 530. We have to be on the field uh, 45 minutes prior. So be on the field at 615 to meet with coaches, captains, check, uh, make sure everybody's got a cast or equipment or whatever. Uh, we'll run through the ball game and then probably get home about 11 o'clock. Uh, all for a whopping eighty dollars. So there you uh, go. <laughs> you know that we don't do it for the money. We do it for the for the fellowship. And and you know I wouldn't trade my my crew for anybody. I think we're still at the top of our game. We're a little bit older, I guess, but uh, I think we're still at the top of our game and have a few years left. Not not a lot, but a few. And yeah. uh, we still enjoy each other and and have fun on Friday night. Well, great. And uh, uh, it is appreciated for all of us that like to go and consume it. Uh, uh, and uh, as they are, like my dad used to say, and it's always been said before, good officials, if you if they're really good, you don't even know they're there. So that's and, the goal. Cer that's and the goal. certainly, uh, certainly uh, for, for, for chain gangs as well, you don't. Uh, want to have uh, issues from that standpoint. Trent, first, thank you for your support of Golden Black. We're grateful for that, but also for interesting. I think it's fascinating what you do and the the attention to detail it takes to do it right. And yet to do it kind of with a, as you do well, with a smile on your face, you got to have a thick skin to some extent, or you at least have to be focused, I think. And that, uh, uh, that I think is uh, one of your best attributes, but thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. All right. We will say thanks also uh, to, to the folks at WLFI. Uh, we appreciate them for making this uh, this uh, live stream happen. It'll be on replay if you miss part of it too. Trent, well, this interview will be on from now till the end of time. Trent, that's a that's a good thing for you. But thank uh, Trent, Trent, thank Trent Johnson and State Farm agent. Trent is my agent.com. and of course. 
folks at Trent know as well, Triple X, Carrie and Greg Ayersman, and uh, just up the street, actually, from where, where Trent uh, works. Uh, and we appreciate them as well. We'll see you next week. We'll have another uh, great show. We hope, uh, we always try. We always say it's going to be a great show, but we also want to thank, of course, uh, Tom Deanhart from our staff and Tim House uh, for some interesting conversation today. We'll look forward to talking next week prior to Purdue's game at Iowa, 3.30 kick in uh, Iowa City, and we'll have our show next uh, Friday at uh, 2 o'clock. So have a great week, everybody. Enjoy the game tomorrow, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you next week on Golden Black Live.